Good evening. Thank you for joining us um, and being very patient with us. Um, normally, we we would have preferred to grow in our uh, standards, um, but you know, obviously, um, you know, there are a lot of things that are involved in making sure life happens smoothly and things don't fall in place exactly as you expect them to um, usually. Um, but thank you very much for being very patient with us. Uh, so today uh, the live is only going to be on Facebook. Um, hopefully, I you know people who have been waiting on YouTube would also be able to join us on Facebook. And I, al I also know that some of you uh, f uh, follow on Instagram. Um, so we would try. We, we are trying to send the message to everybody that it is not live on Facebook or sorry YouTube or Instagram. So um, you know, just in case. Um, uh, you know, I'm giving little time for people to just join us on Facebook this uh, this evening. Um, but um, it's uh, really funny that we're going to, um, you know, we started this uh, specifically this study on the secret of joy, and uh, Satan for the last three days has been constantly attacking us in uh, you know just taking away our joy for trying to do um, this particular series and that also means that God has a very special plan in speaking to us. He wants to speak to us and teach us on how to be joyful uh, in every area of your life. So thank you uh, for being very, very patient so far uh, with us. Um, so for today, um, we are going to continue um, for the book of Philippians. We are uh, looking at um, what Paul is writing from his letter in the church in Philippi, uh, to the church in Philippi from the prison. We talked about how Paul's letter, this particular letter is a very personal letter, very practical letter, and of course, very positive letter. And so um, one thing I've realized over the last three days is that, uh, you know, the, the things that are, you know, the way that things are going uh, with our internet and with all our connectivity and stuff, um, that, uh, you know, it is easier for me to get really bogged down by uh, all the things that are going wrong and just lose um, i mean i've been losing my patience uh, over everything uh, but i'm i'm glad that we are in the middle of this study and especially today's topic is more interesting that uh, that it's, it's about how to be joyful no matter what happens in your life so just in case if you don't have the notes uh, our notes is available the digital notes is available on you on you version go ahead and take uh, you know just Open your Bible app um, and have a look at uh, the YouVersion notes. And I'm sure Pastor Eshwant will also put up the notes on the comment section for you, um, so that you can um, uh, you can take the notes uh, directly from the comment section. He would also uh, most probably keep updating the notes on the comment section, uh, so that you can you can continue to just uh, write down the notes. And it's a very important thing for us to learn. Uh, practice, uh, you know, taking down the notes uh, in what we are studying. All right, we are in Philippians chapter 1. Uh, we looked at yesterday, we looked at how to enjoy people in our life from chapter 1 uh, verses 3 to 11. We re read, the, read from that passage and we read about how um, Paul talks about what are the four keys in order to enjoy people in our lives. Uh, Paul talks about uh, one of the major things that we need to learn in order to enjoy people in our lives is to, of course, um, to, to, to learn to see what is good in people, to, to be grateful for what is good in people. And then we looked at how the second key is um, to start practicing positive praying for people, um, for everyone that we, um, you know, that we want to look forward to, um, to see a change in them. Uh, we need to learn to, po to, to do positive praying. Uh, and then we talked about patient, being patient with their progress. Um, some of them will not uh, grow as fast as we want them to, but some of them will grow um, you know, at, a, at a rapid pace. Some of them will take a lifetime to change. Um, but um, you know, that's one thing we need to learn, to be positive with people and their progress. Um, and then we talked about the last thing as the fourth key, as uh, in order to enjoy people, you need to love them from your heart. Uh, a love that only God can give it has to be a supernatural love and that's why in Romans chapter 5 Paul reminds us that God Romans chapter 5 verses 5 Paul says that God poured out his love 
his love not our love supernatural love supernatural love that will help us to love people in spite of all the angles uh, that love god poured out into our hearts uh, by the means of the holy spirit Uh, whom he gave us as a gift paul says that one of the major reasons why the holy spirit uh, is given to us is so that we can learn to love one another we can learn to love people just like how god loved us so those are the four key secrets that we talked about in order to enjoy people in our lives i know some of you were following us yesterday uh, in fact one of the biggest technical uh, technical difficulty that happened yesterday was the the sound the you know the audio, audio was really bad um so we worked on the audio um of yesterday's uh, yesterday's class um so we will probably put it up right after this right after this uh class so that in case you missed out the last part simply because the audio was not well and you just turned off um this um you know today we will re, re, re you know reload it um in in facebook um just give us an one hour time after this class i will make sure that i will put it up so that you can have that notes uh, that that session also in your hand so that uh, you can follow up just in case you missed yesterday all right so uh, today we're going to look at the second thing uh, philippians chapter 1 again the second half of philippians chapter 1 that's what we're going to look at we're going to talk about how do we learn to be joyful all the time in our lives choose to be joyful no matter what happens in our lives philippians chapter 2 verses 12 onwards uh, let me let me read verses 12 to 25 um as i read just um just follow along with me 26 sorry verses 12 um chapter 1 verses 12 philippians and i want you to know my dear brothers and sisters that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news for everyone here including the whole palace guard um knows now the whole including the whole palace guard knows that i am in chains because of christ and because of my imprisonment most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak god's message without fear it's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and are out of rivalry but others preach about christ with pure motives they preach because they love me and they know that i have been appointed to defend the good news those who do not have pure motives as they preach about christ they preach with selfish ambition not sincerely intending to make my chains more painful to me but that doesn't matter whether their motives are false or genuine the message about christ is being preached either way so i rejoice and i will continue to rejoice for i know that as you pray for me the spirit of jesus christ helps me this will lead to my deliverance for i fully expect and hope that i will never be ashamed that i will continue to be bold for christ as i have been in the past and i trust that my life will bring honor to christ whether i live or die for to me living means living for christ and dying is even better but if i live i can do more fruitful work for christ so i really don't know whether which is better i am torn between two desires i long to go and be with christ uh, which would be far better for me but for your sake it is better that i continue to live knowing this i am convinced that i will remain alive so i can continue to help all of you grow and experience the joy of your faith and when i come to you again you will have even more reason to take pride in jesus christ because of what he is doing through me it is uh, it is such a um, brilliant passage if if um, if you ask paul to testify uh, give a testimony of his life in 3 minutes this probably would be what he would tell us the secret of his life the secret of his ministry the secret of his leadership the secret of his christian faith and walk in god is is basically um comprehensively put in this um in this passage uh, philippians chapter chapter 1 verses 1 to 26 if uh, paul has to in fact paul shares a lot of his life within this book in four chapters he shared you will know more about paul um you know through this book than any other book that you would see in the bible any other book that paul wrote or even in acts for that matter um so here paul talks about life and its circumstances 
and how they affect us and how they should not um, and how can we make most of every circumstance in our lives to to become our own gain to to turn it into our own gain choose to be joyful no matter what happens see most people don't enjoy life they just endure it they they don't enjoy happiness actually uh, we think that life must be perfect in order for us to be happy if i could just change my situation life would be great if i could just get rid of all my problems um, maybe then life would be great if i could just uh, you know change this person maybe i will be happy you know maybe i'll be uh, i'll be more joyful but there is no such thing as a problem free life that is one thing that we need to understand there is no such thing as problem free life if we are going to learn to be happy joyful we must learn to be joyful in every situation in every problem and in every experiences of life happiness comes from the word happenstance um from which in fact we get the word circumstance you know so it depends on happenings happiness is primarily dependent on circumstances but joy is internal while happiness is external you know you start uh, um uh if you you are happy simply because all the circumstances are good everything that you planned is going well then then that means your joy your happiness is actually dependent on your situation your circumstances that is not happiness that is not true happiness what paul talks about in this book about being joyful no matter what happens is about a joy that you be in no matter what happens in your life you are still joyful you see joy is internal while happiness is external you have a happy time at a, at a, at wanderla you have a happy time at a great at if you're enjoying if you if you're a biryani lover you'll probably be happy at a at a at a shagos restaurant or a paradise restaurant uh, you you know because of the you know the thing or the circumstance you feel happy or if you like some friends hanging out with friends you'll be happy only when you're with friends your circumstances are deciding when you're happy but if you leave that place you leave those people you leave that particular condition or situation then you are no more happy you lose your happiness but joy is constant the joy that god gives us is a constant thing so that that is the question that we want to try and answer how do we be how can we be joyful how can we be happy in spite of what is going on in our lives so let me um, um take paul's words and try and teach you through paul's life and paul's words how can we be happy you see uh, the let me give you a background the context of this story uh, when paul is writing this letter paul has already been in the prison um for more than 4 years by then there there not be there have not been a great years for him they in fact they have been one of the most miserable circum you know uh, years uh, for paul in fact they were very difficult circumstances for him um during those four years he was arrested in jerusalem um and uh, you know by a false um trumped up charges and he was taken to the prison in jerusalem while he was in jerusalem in the prison uh, the pharisees and sadducees uh, who were the law givers of of Jew, jewish traditions and judaism they were uh, so uh, against paul uh, they wanted to kill him they were secretly planning to kill him while he was in the prison itself the somehow the jailer the prison prison guard came to know about that the prison in charge who is a roman um the, he knowing that paul is a roman citizen he decides that if i keep paul in jerusalem paul is going to be killed so he takes him from that prison overnight he transports him to another city called caesarea and that's where paul stayed caesarea is outside of israel so obviously jewish influence is not there um, so in that prison in caesarea paul stayed for a long long time two years going through different kinds of trials under different judges um even the governor was uh, was involved in this in his, in his trial process during all this time um charged up by a trumped up charge paul kept spending time in that prison waiting for an opportunity through this during this period paul had one particular desire in his heart his desire was to go to rome 
if you book if you read the book of romans you will see paul's long lasting dream was that he wants to go to the city of rome and preach the gospel in the city of rome so while he was in the prison paul decides that he would use this opportunity to go to rome on the day when the governor of caesarea who after much trials decided that we will let go paul because i don't see any fault in paul on the day he decided to give a uh, judgment for paul paul decides to say i want to appeal my case to nero now in roman culture in roman empire um, if a roman citizen require you know request that he wants to take his case to the caesar himself then irrespective of uh, what the judgment would have been at a local court they would have to send paul uh, that particular roman citizen to the caesar, to the caesar to go to caesar and so even though the governor of that particular area caesar uh, caesarea wanted to release paul now that paul had requested that he wants to go to rome uh, he decides to send him to rome so paul waits for another few more months in order for him to go to rome for a long time he stayed in that prison finally when the, the a time came when he was to be you know um, shipped to uh, to 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 the city of rome on his way to the rome the ship got wrecked he got, they were caught in a storm ship wrecked and they were in an they were caught up in an island island full of snakes poisonous snakes in fact those poisonous snakes even bit paul um so along with the prisoners are in there paul was stranded for many more months till finally he got rescued and was brought to rome finally a long lasting dream that he's been dreaming of was going to fulfill and he was about to get into the rome city of rome only to be arrested and was taken directly to the prison and was put inside the prison and a house arrest in nero's palace and that's where paul was now paul is not a young man when he was going through this he he is an old man he has been in ministry for quite some time he has traveled the world three times he criss crossed then the known world all the countries that came across his path he went and preached the gospel established churches raised up leaders he was an old man he has done a lot of work a lot of service to god now in his old age instead of instead of being at a place where he is comfortable and relaxing he is in a prison for more than 3 years and he is struggling in, in, in the, the old age is catching up with him uh, he is going through a rough time as i told you the circumstances in which paul was in in that particular prison were really miserable he was not really happy with what is happening to him and yet paul says i will rejoice in fact he not only is rejoicing he asks you and me to rejoice rejoice how can somebody say rejoice when he is going through a um, uh, you know a period of life that is that is basically uh, you know pathetic you know from all sides he's getting hit he's been crushed and yet paul uh, says that i will rejoice i will rejoice and i want you to rejoice so the curiosity um, um to know how can a person to person can say something like this had had made us made me especially to begin to study this 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 book and understand that paul has a very interesting secret to be joyful no matter what happens in our lives well in this particular passage that you have just read we have just read from verses 12 onwards you will see four secrets that paul lays down for us which will help us to understand how to be joyful no matter what happens in our lives i want to call them four essentials for joy joyful living all right number 1 the first one the first secret that paul uh, shows us is this uh, if i have to be joyful no matter what's happening in my life i need a perspective to live from i need a perspective to live from think about it okay the first thing that is the first secret is this i need a perspective to live from look at verses 12 now i want you to know brothers what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel what has happened to me to really serve uh, uh, to advance the gospel look at verse 13 for everyone here including the whole palace guard knows that i am in chains because of christ 
What Paul is saying is this. I'm happy I'm in chains. I'm happy I'm in the prison. Uh, wait a second. What did he say? I'm, I'm happy to be in the prison. I'm happy to be in chains. Why? Because of my chains, Christ is being preached everywhere. Wow. What a perspective. Everyone has problems. You have problem. I have problem. Every one of our problems are very serious for us. You brought uh, your own problems right now to your Facebook page or wherever you're watching this from. And uh, as you're listening to it, you got your own problems. And your problems are bigger to you. Really big to you. Now, when you, when you look at what Paul is going through and compare what you are thinking your problems are, really you realize that your problems are far lesser than what Paul is going through at this point in time. Um, or maybe your problems are really worse than what problem pro Paul is going through at this point of time when he's writing this letter. In both ways, there is something that I want to teach you. It is this. Your problems are not as important as how you are looking at your problems. That's an important thing. You're not problem, your problems are not so important as how you are looking at those problems. It is your perspective of the problems that you're going through that makes the difference in your life. The way you look at your problem is much more important than the problem itself. Your perspective makes the difference. What Paul is saying is, in other words, I can see the best even in the worst. I can see God at work in the problems even when they, when they don't go my way and, and, and you know, they're crushing me down. Um, and what is he saying is, in other words, non-believers, people who don't know God are being encouraged by, by you know, by, are, being, uh, are being witnessed to my attitude in the middle of my problems and believers are being encouraged. That's what he kept on saying. As a result, look at verses 13. As a result, everyone, including the whole palace guard, the entire Praetorian guard knows that I'm in chains. The Praetorian guard is non christ let's say non-believers. Then look at verses 14. He says, and because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak, to boldly speak God's message without fear. Now, as I told you, Paul always wanted to go to Rome. When he reached Rome, he planned, his plan was to have, of course, to have a gospel meeting and he wanted to go around and preach the gospel in the city of Rome. But instead of that, God allowed him to be thrown into the prison. While he was sitting in the prison under his chains inside the prison for a long, long, long time, waiting for Nero to actually call him for judgment or to have a trial, what Paul did is he spent time, he spent that time during that time, that time, he spent writing letters, letters like these. Prison epistles is what we call in the Bible. In fact, half of the New Testament was written by Paul. The 13 out of the 27 books in the, in the New Testament, 13 were written by Paul. And half of them of those 13 were written from this particular prison. So technically, one third of the New Testament, Paul wrote from the prison itself, the same prison which he did not anticipate, which he did not want, same kind of situation that, um, same situation that, um, that would have discouraged many of us. Paul is actually using that discouragement, that period of time to write down some of his most prolific letters to the church. So he sees that, he sees, he sees how God is actually changing his circumstance to become good for him only. Then he says, because of my change, the whole Praetorian guard came to the palace guard, came to know about Jesus. Who is the Praetorian guard? Now, Praetorian guard is made up of a lot of soldiers, the, um, uh, picked up from different battalions of the Roman Empire by Caesar himself. They are, they are like a presidential guard, you know, the secret service, something like that. They are specifically selected by Caesar. These are the best of the best of the best of the best of the best in the country, in the whole Roman Empire. They are best at their, you know, their their um, their their um, wisdom. They are best at understanding, grasping stuff. They are strong physically. They are strong emotionally. They they think to, you know ten times ahead of everybody else. They under under steps ahead. They they are really good. The best, top class people. So Caesar would personally pick them up to protect him all the time. They are the highest paid 
um, people in the entire empire when they retire serving them serving the caesar for 12 years they would then be made leaders of the rome you know roman provinces like they would become bureaucrats in our language they would be ias officers the collectors or or the chief secretaries of or you know, things like that they would be in charges of very important crucial departments of the roman empire so for paul for paul there is no more strategic kind of group of people that he could reach out from prison than these guys you see the praetorian guard not only protect nero but they will protect the nero's palace that means nobody else apart from the praetorian guard would be allowed to take care of nero's palace or nero's family so that includes because the prison of paul was inside nero's palace that includes even the prisoners itself so the um, so basically this is what is happening when paul was uh, put into the prison for 2 years he would be surrounded by the praetorian guard who would do 4 hour shifts every day at one place so it it means if for example paul is in a prison he had a few praetorian guard who were standing guarding him um you know basically for him, you know keeping him from running away and while they are guarding the you know uh, prison uh, for every 4 hours this group of people will change that is a rule in the you know caesar's palace including the caesar's administration so that nobody would know where caesar is at any point of time every 4 hours the shift keeps changing new people would start coming in and you know new new people would start protecting him it's a, the same principle applies to uh, uh, nero's family and the prisoners also inside the nero's palace so every 4 hours um four people are shifting and new four people are coming around paul now paul is in the prison yes he is captive but he also got for 4 hours captive audience around him they were guarding his prison but he has got four people who are basically caught up around him and what a guy like paul would do naturally would start preaching the gospel so while he is there in those 2 years by just by calculating this just by calculation itself paul has been in the prison protected by four praetorian guard changing at every 4 hours for nearly 2 hours four hour, with a 4 hour shift paul would have witnessed the gospel to more than 4380 guards 4380 guards these are the leaders of the future huh? not even common people future leaders Paul is basically preaching gospel to everybody who is around him in the prison. Four thousand three hundred and eighty guards, Praetorian guards, would have known about Jesus. That's why he says the whole palace guard came to know about Jesus Christ. Because every four hours they keep changing, right? So that way the gospel began to spread all across the Nero's palace, including the gospel penetrated into Nero's own bedroom. Uh, history says that Nero killed his. Uh, his wife his mother and his child uh, simply because they have become believers how did they become believers because of this this one guy who is in the prison who is preaching to the praetorian guard who would then at the end of the shift would somehow at some point would keep talking about it would keep talking about jesus christ and somehow it reached to the nero's bedroom so much so that nero's wife nero's mother nero's child have accepted jesus christ so paul is saying well i'm glad i'm in chains because of my chains the whole palace guard came to know about jesus what's more he says because of my chains most of the believers in the lord have been bold now they have been encouraged to speak the word of god more courageously more fearlessly what he's saying is this not only non believers are coming to know about jesus christ because of my chains chains but even believers are getting encouraged because of my chains because of my attitude in in spite of the chains believers are getting courage to say well if paul can be so much encouraged so much joyful in spite of his difficulty i can also be so they are going out and preaching the gospel all the believers a courage is contagious you know faith is contagious too it spreads like a wildfire other believers are becoming bold because of paul 
who is being bold so paul gained a perspective because of this what should i live from you need to live from a perspective you need to live from a perspective if you want to enjoy your life so what kind of perspective are you supposed to have romans chapter 8 verses 28 well and we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him we know this that in all things god works for the good of those who love him here is the perspective you need to learn this is the lesson for, lesson number 1 for you that god has a purpose behind all of my problems god has a purpose behind all of my problems every one of my problems whatever problem you're going to go, you're going through right now god has a purpose behind it if you can develop that perspective because you love god because you are in the will of god and because you are a person who believes in jesus christ as your personal savior god will work out everything for your own good notice this this promise is for those who believe in jesus christ and because you believe god will work out everything for your own good god has a purpose behind every one of my problems that is a perspective we all need to develop when you get this perspective on the you are on the way to joyful living paul says that god has a purpose behind all of my problems therefore i have a perspective to live from that is secret number 1 number 2 the secret number 2 uh, or the essential thing that we need in order to be joyful is this that i need to i need a priority to live by i need a priority to live by now let me explain this when things get tough i need to know what's really important in order to distinguish between the trivial and significant there are a lot of things that are trivial in our lives not really important but there are a lot of things that are significant in our lives when things are going wrong all around in my life um in the middle of all that chaos i need to understand what is important what is significant and what is trivial i can be living my life either based on my problems or my priorities either you will decide what is important in your life or you will let others decide what is important for your life if you don't choose your priorities then you will go around putting one fire after another putting off one fire after another living your life simply from one problem to another problem to another problem to another problem not choosing what is important look at verses 15 now verse 15 and 16 paul is saying this not only i am in prison but if i want uh, if you know if my, my situation is so bad that uh that if, if if you want to put down somebody who's really who's really not well uh, this is what is happening to him so this is routine it is true that some of some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry but others preach about christ with pure motives they preach that because they love me for they know that i have been appointed to defend the good news those others do not have pure motives as they preach about christ they preach with selfish ambition not sincerely intending to make my chains even more painful to me let me pause there so here is what he's saying he's saying there are some people you remember that in the last verse he said there are believers who are going out and preaching more boldly about jesus christ now he's saying among them there are some people who are doing that preaching out of love but there are other people who are preaching out of rivalry they are jealous about me not uh, you know not jealous with a z z but a jealous with j they are jealous about me they want to put me in more trouble so they are using my name going out and preaching the gospel when they get arrested and they are asked inquired about why they are doing what they are doing then they would put the whole blame on and paul saying that paul instigated us to do this that way paul's problems will get adding up more and more inside the prison that they are trying to make sure paul would never come out of their prison a man if if you know if you quickly want to lose a joy 
then you can uh, the, the, then the the quickest way to do that is to let others criticism others critical mind disappoint us if you want to lose your joy quickly you will let others critical critics others critical minds other critical things to disappoint you paul wouldn't do that he wouldn't let 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 that to happen to him that's why in verses 18 he says so what but it, that doesn't matter whether their motives are false or genuine the message about christ is being preached either way so i rejoice and i will continue to rejoice what does it matter he say the important thing is that in e every way whether false motives or true motives christ is preached and that's all i need to rejoice so he say i am not going to let anybody to steal my joy i am not going to let anybody else's intentions to harm me to steal my joy i am not going to let negative mindset of other people to steal my joy i am not going to neither the circumstances nor the critics nor the people their motives may be wrong their style may be wrong but if the message of christ is being preached doesn't matter even if i am the one who is going to be put into more trouble i am not going to let that disappoint me so in other words he is saying my my priority is christ is being preached you know in the entire book of philippians that's the only question um the statement with a question mark there you know so what so what what does it matter you know that's the question that's the only question in the book of philippians and it's the question of priority in uh, literally in greek is it's so what so what i don't care what does it matter he's got us his priorities already set his values already set so he will not, he's not going to let little things to steal his joy how think about this how many arguments in your marriage over little things um that really doesn't matter how many of us would argue in our marriages in our relationships over little things that really doesn't matter is are they worth losing your joy no i have a perspective to live from and i have a priority to live by so what kind of priority should i live by that is a question to answer right proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 is is a beautiful verse that i love one of my favorite verses in the bible it says this in everything that you do this is the priority in everything that you do put god first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success in everything that you do put god first and he will direct you and crown you with success so basically what the wise man is saying this here is the thing your priority should be god in everything putting god first should be your priority what should you live by you should live by the will of god that's the other point that's the point i'm trying to say more than anything else in this world more than your desires your wants god's will should be the priority in your life so focus on what really counts that's the lesson for you focus on what really counts what counts god's will counts that is your priority all right so lesson number 2 focus on what really matters and what really matters is the will of god for our lives all right that's number 2 number 3 the third one is this secret number 3 paul is saying first i said i need a perspective to, to to live from i need a priority to live by number 3 i need a power to lean on if i have to be joyful no matter what is happening in my life i need a power to live on i need strength you know to make it in my life i need in order to keep going for that matter life can wear us out you know all of us know that at some point life can drain drain us so completely the circumstances around us the people around us problems around us can drain us so much 
because one crisis after another crisis one situation to after another situation one problem after another problem one enemy after another enemy keeps hitting us draining all our energy we are losing energy we are losing our power at some point we even lose our will to continue it happens to every christian by the way it happens to every believer too well it happens to every person on this earth so at some point we are ready to throw in our towel and say enough is enough maybe some of you today are in that position where you're saying man i'm really tired i just want to give up you say i've done the best that i could do uh it's not good enough i tried i'm got, i'm i'm a, I mean I'm really sick right now. I I just need I don't think I can continue this anymore. Here is the point. You need a fresh supply of power. Because so far you did on your own, now you need God's power in your life. Well, that's what Paul is saying in verses 19. He says, "I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Christ, what has happened to me will turn out to be my own deliverance i eagerly expect and hope that i will no way be ashamed in other words he's saying this you see no matter what is happening in my life i know this your prayer and the spirit of jesus christ will help me so paul is saying i have two things that will give me strength and keep me going two things that will help me to keep going in spite of what is happening in my life number 1 the prayers of other people number 2 the help of the holy spirit the power that comes from the holy spirit you see he says this i have hope of my deliverance because of your prayers and the spirit of god circle the word hope you know you can't live without hope you got to have hope to cope Cornell University did a study of uh, 25,000 prisoner of wars uh, of from the World War II. They found that the man a man can handle tremendous amount of stress and pressure, tremendous amount of torture, tremendous amount of difficulty if he has hope. As long as he has hope, the moment a man gives up hope, he's doomed. When you give up hope you are doomed you lose your power you lose your strength so you need to depend on those two things pray prayer for other people a prayer from other people and the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit hey listen praying for others and asking others to pray for you is a very important thing i'm glad bible teaches us to pray for one another pray for one another with all in all situations um do not ever hesitate to ask people to pray for you number 2 do not ever hesitate to pray for people when they ask you to pray for them you know some of us are very shy to pray for others uh if somebody asks you to pray for them you will say okay i'll ask my pastor to pray for you i'll ask another elder to pray for you don't no no when god is bringing people to you and they're asking you to pray for them pray you should pray you you may not know the words you may not know the voc- vocabulary you may not have flowery vocabulary but there is power in your prayer even a simple prayer can bring power to others you just saw that paul is saying because of your prayers i am receiving power that means when we are praying for others there is power that is going into their lives so don't hesitate to pray for others don't hesitate to ask others to pray for you you will receive power power to continue in spite of all your problems others may not be able to help you in your circumstances you may not be able to help others with their problems but what you can do what others can do for you is to pray so pray and of course then you seek the anointing of the holy spirit ask the holy spirit to fill you with power romans chapter 8 again talks about how the holy spirit groans from within us and prays to father when we don't know how to pray when we when we are in a position where we words are not able to describe our pain our struggle and you don't know really know what to do um, holy spirit will help you and pray on your behalf to the father he will give you the power that you need 
So if I'm going to make it in life, I need a perspective to live from. Something that I can see the way things are that, you know, that really are not the way I feel about them, not the way they appear to be, but a perspective that is divine perspective. Number two, I need a priority to live by so that I can do the first things first and I'm not taken away by non-essential things. Number three, I need a power to lean on, uh, live on that gives me strength to keep on going on and on and on and on. Here is the lesson number three. How do I get my hope to keep going on? How do I continue to keep going on? Uh, again, Philip says in chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I have the strength to face all my conditions by the power that Christ gives me. So here is the lesson. With God's power, nothing can devastate me. With God's power, nothing can devastate me. At no point I will be depleted of my energy. I will be depleted of my power. I may be disappointed sometimes. I may experience certain dry seasons. But I will never come to a position where I am devastated. I will always have power to rise up, keep going, keep moving forward. If I have the Holy Spirit inside me. So, my power comes from God and that power will not allow me to be devastated. Number four, we talked about perspective, we talked about priority, we talked about the power and number four, here is the most important thing. I need a purpose to live for. I need a purpose to live for. Paul is old. He's tired. He's been in the prison for, well, more than four years. Well, at least four years by then. He's actually ready to go to heaven, you know. When you go on reading, you will realize that Paul is like, I'm coming to the end. I know I can sense that I'm coming to the end of my life. I'm ready to go to heaven. Um, they have taken away every single thing from him. His family, his friends, his ministry, his freedom, his privacy. They have taken everything away from him except the one thing that cannot be taken away from him, from you. That is the purpose to live for. I need a purpose to live for. Paul has a purpose to live for. Look at it. Verses 21. Verses 21. Paul is saying, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He's not suicidal, you know, but he's anticipating death. He's not afraid of dying. He's saying, I'm not afraid of dying because die, death is good. I get to go to heaven. Death is in fact on to better things. In fact, out of this prison. But while I'm here, while I'm here, I have a purpose for living. That's what he's saying. Look at what he continues to say. For I fully expect and hope that I, verses 20, for I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed. But I will continue to be bold for Christ as I've been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ. Whether I live or die. For me, living means to live for Christ. Dying is even better. You see, but if I live, I can do more grateful, more fruitful work for Christ. So I really don't know which is better. I am torn between two desires. I long to go be with Christ, which would be far better for me. But for your sake, it is better that I continue to live on. Paul is saying here, I'm torn between two desires. My personal desire is that I would die. I'm old now. I finished a lot. I did a lot of ministry. It's time for me to go, go home. I'm ready to go home. I want to give up and go home. I can be with Christ. That is my desire. But I also have another desire. The other desire is that I live. Not because I'm, I'm, I'm more worried about my life, but that my life can become useful to you, useful for you. I know if I live, you will become better because of me. I can continue to teach. In fact, look at verses 25. He says, knowing this, I'm convinced that I will remain alive so that I can continue to help all of you grow and experience the joy of your faith. So what he's saying is this, that I would like to continue to live so that I can help you to grow 
become stronger, become more healthier in your faith. So, how do you fill the blank if I ask you? Just like Paul is saying, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. If I ask you to fill in the blank, for me to live is dash. What would you fill in there? For me to live is dash. What would you write there? You know, the ads on the television tells us what values are in our society for they tell us what we want to hear. Based on the advertising, I, I could say that most of us would fill in the blanks, fill that particular blank, blank in one or three ways. One, I want to live, I'll, for, for me to live is possessions. Get all you can. Can all you got. Set on the can and spoil the rest. Get, get, get. We buy things, we, you know, you think about this. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have. To impress people we don't like. That's how we are. We live for possessions. That's dumb, you know. Or for me to live is pleasure. For some of you would be saying, for me to live is pleasure. If it, fe if it, if it feels good, do it. Anything that makes me happy, anything that makes me pleasurable, anything that gives me pleasure, anything to relieve my boredom for one little moment, but Monday, back to work, life is still in the pits, pleasure doesn't last. Number three, you would say, for me to live is power, or maybe position, maybe prestige, maybe popularity, I don't know, fame. We dress up for success, we strive, uh, drive for success, we pay our, you know, we, we pay for success, we, you know, we do a lot of things. Image for us to, is, uh, is everything. Some of us are living for an image, for people to be impressed by us, by our, who we are, how we dress, what we do, how much money we make, you know, all that. Popularity, you know. I realize a lot of young people look for popularity. They will do anything to get fit into the peer group, even if it means to lower their standards. You can be the most popular person on your campus. Come back two years later, in your college nobody remembers you. One minute you are a hero, next minute you are a zero. You know. The problem with positions, pleasure or power or popularity is this that they don't last. Not a lifetime much less an eternity that isn't there isn't an ultimate there, that is not the ultimate fulfillment if it were true most then people who had the most pleasure would be the happiest people but they are not the people who could afford the most uh, all experiences would be joyful but it is not true you know that the richest people on the earth are some of the most unhappiest people on the earth so Paul had a purpose for his life. He's got a long-term goal. He looked at things in the light of eternity. He talks about it in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. Listen. The best use of your life is to invest it in something that will outlast you. The best use of your life is to invest it in something that will outlast you. It's great to be a Christian, but I'm not a Christian because I'm afraid I'm going to die tonight, but because I've got to live tomorrow. That's why I'm a Christian. Not because I'm afraid to die today, but because I got to live tomorrow. Even if there, were isn't, there, there isn't a heaven, it would be worth living it like this, being a believer for the joy here on earth. The fact is that there are more, there is more to cars, there is more to stereos, nice homes and things that are here and now and then. Only a fool would go through all this life unprepared for something he knows that eventually at the death he's going to lose all this. 
So why does God leave you here on earth after you become a Christian? Once you are his child, why does he leave us here? For the benefit of others. Now here is the lesson number four. The secret of joy. Jesus first, others second, yourself third. Jesus first, J, others second, O, yourself third. Why? Joy. Your life here on earth is given to you very specifically so that you can accomplish God-given purpose. And God-given purpose is to help others. To live your life that will outlast you for the benefit of others. I'm not saying you don't, you don't make anything for yourself. That's not my point. My point is to use what God gave you to benefit others. You see, we live in a total preoccupation with self in our society. Me generation. When we learn to have a greater purpose for our life than ourself, then you will have more joy than you can handle. There is no such thing as a problem-free living. When you base your life on all kinds of values, on the kinds of values that are going to last instead of, you know, end temporarily, then the problems that you face in temporary are not going to be significant. You are not going to be, get worried about them. So what if the things didn't pan out the way you wanted them to pan out so far? Worked out as you planned. God has a purpose behind the biggest of your problems. I believe that God wants you to enjoy the rest of your life. But it starts with the foundational values that we are talking about it right now. Your purpose. You see, here is, let me conclude with this. Your purpose, once you understand the purpose of your life, your purpose will help you to define, uh, draw power from the right source. Your purpose will help you to draw power from the right source. Prayers and the power of the Holy Spirit. Your purpose will draw, help you to draw power from the right sources. Once you receive the power from the right sources, then you know you have to use that, pro that power for the priority things, the important things, the most important things. And that's, why you, that's when you will have the priority set already for you. Your purpose will help you to draw power from the right place. The power that you draw will keep you accountable to use it for the right priority. And once you know you are, doing your li you are living your life with a purpose, using the power that God gave you for the right thing, for the right priority, then no matter what happens in your life, you know everything will work out for your good and that gives you a perspective. You see that? That's why Paul could say, I rejoice and could ask you to rejoice no matter what's happening in your life. Now as I close um, this evening, with a, I want to pray, take a moment to pray with you. I don't know what you're going through in your life. Where in this, um, in this journey of your life you are in? Maybe you don't have a purpose that you know of. Maybe you're tired and you need power to draw power from. Maybe you, your, your life is confused because your priorities are not set. Or maybe you just need a perspective right now. I don't know what it is. But God... I'm sure God spoke to you today. He's willing, it, willing to give it to you today. Now here is what uh, Pastor Ashwant is going to do right now. On the comment section, he's going to leave four reflective questions that I would like you for you to think about. Okay, take the moment after this prayer, take the moment to read through those reflections. Before you sleep tonight, answer those questions. Write down your own understanding from the passage that we have read and uh, learned from. Would you do that? Please do that. It will help you to remember all that you have learned today. Even as I am speaking, he will put those questions. Let me take this moment to pray with you. Father, we thank you, God, for this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to connect like this, pray together, to learn from your scriptures. You are a very loving God. We thank you for your love and your grace upon our lives. And today, in spite of all the technical difficulties, you have helped us 
to still gather together like this um, and, uh, and learn from. We know that because of the technical difficulties, there may be some people who could not receive this word today, um, either through YouTube or Instagram. We pray that God that um, they would find it an opportunity, uh, find it a, a fi fi find an opportunity for them to also get this uh, study so that they can also be enriched through your word. Thank you for teaching to us. Thank you for all that you have done so far for us. We bless you. We thank you for um, for you are a God who works out everything for our good. Help us to have that perspective. We want to thank you, God, that you taught us that our life must be lived based on the priorities, not based on uh, circumstances. So help us to have a right priority. Help us, God, to lean on to you for power all the time. Because there will be times when we will lose all our energy if we depend on our own power. But we know that none of this will work out if we don't have a purpose for our lives. Just like how Paul knew his purpose, help us to know our purpose for our life. And so that the rest of our life can be defined by that. And that God, no matter what happens in our lives, if we have the perspective, if we have the priorities set, if we know where to draw power from, if we have the right purpose for our lives, then no matter what happens, nobody can steal our joy. Help us to be joyful no matter what happens. Thank you for everyone who joined us today. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Listen, um, tomorrow, from tomorrow, we will do only Facebook Live. So uh, you, can, uh, you can make sure that everybody gets this information. Um, uh, now there is a possibility that we may not be able to solve the technical problem. So we will do everything on Facebook from tomorrow for the rest of the um, classes. Thank you very much for joining us. God bless you.